recording. <clears throat> Steins Gate is a science fiction thriller and it's based on the visual novel video game of the same name. This anime is directed by Hiroshi Hamasaki and Takuyo Sato, written by Juki Hanada and the music composed by Jun Murak Murakami and Takeshi Abo, and animated by the studio White Fox. This anime is about uh, the self-proclaimed mad scientist Rintaru Okabe rents out a room in a rickety old building in Akihabara where he indulges himself in his hobby of investigating prospective future gadgets with fellow lab members. Mayuri Shina, his air-headed childhood friend, and Hashida Itaru, a perverted hacker nicknamed Daru. The three pass the time by tinkering with their most promising contraption yet, a machine dubbed to the foam microwave, which perform the strange function of morphing bananas into piles of green gel. Alright, that's a little bit of the synopsis. Mm -hmm. um, so what should we start with? Uh, Dead Sickle Games. Uh, later on, but I, I want to hear, I just want to hear like your first reactions of Steins Gate as a whole, so. Okay, uh, oh my god, where do I start? Okay, so this anime put me in a state of, I need to read the subtitles, not missing anything, not missing any dialogue, any, uh, I was like, Okay, this position that I am right now, I cannot see a dub because I, I despise seeing an anime that is dubbed. Uh, I like it, you know, as it is, Japanese. And I like, you know, reading subtitles, even though I'm sometimes lazy reading them. But this anime in particular, wow, it you cannot miss any details. Nothing. You, you can't because it's the dialogue is very important. And that's what I achieve and you know felt about this anime you you need to uh know about what they say all the time e even the little things <laughs> yeah the tiniest the tiniest thing that can be referenced to something that's gonna be mind-blowing exactly it's uh the, the story itself it's just um it's twisted and it's like this mystery in the beginning with these uh, gel and green gel and I, I was like and, and the phone and the microwave and how they actually demail people people mm -hmm. uh, from the past and altered you know things from the uh, from the you know current time and oh my gosh it's uh and, and it actually makes sense in a way uh, I mean, I'm not gonna say that uh, time traveling is, you know, real, but it actually makes makes sense in what they actually do in that lab. Um, and of course, it's it's science fiction, um, but of course, um, the characters uh, themselves are really really good, such as in what they have been saying, the game, uh, the visual novel. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, really positive uh, reviews on uh, Steam, and I'm like, wow! Even the even the visual novel is good. So, damn. Uh, Which there is another game coming out, January 2019. Oh gosh. We could Man, it's yeah, it's a. Uh, Ooh, um, <laughs> the story the story itself is really good. I can say that it's something that I've, I've seen a lot of time traveling TV shows, anime, but nothing like this. I've seen, let's see, the classic um, uh, Back to the Future. I've seen Dark. It's in a German uh, Netflix original. Uh, I've seen, what's the other one? Uh, Ministerio del Tiempo. It's a Spanish from Spain. 
uh, time traveling t uh, TV series. Mm -hmm. And wow, nothing is very compared to this thing because they they have multiple ways to manipulate time. Also, yeah, it's like the it's like the the primer of anime. Like if anyone knows what primer is, it's a very low budget time travel movie. But the way it it just folds onto itself with like loops and loops, using the machine again and again. Yes. And how varied each timeline is, and how these different changes, and just being lost between these timelines. Exactly, and how they explain it. Oh my God, it's it's like okay, this this actually could exist in real life, but of course, um, it's science fiction, but uh, it, it makes sense in a way. That's what I'm talking about. It's uh, it's twisted, but it's that good. Um, there's a lot of people. I think it was you know back in the day. Back in the day, maybe I would not understand <laughs> mm -hmm. what this anime actually meant, and you know what it, you know, trying to teach. It wouldn't be the same impact back in 2011 because this was aired 2011. Yeah. And it, it won't be the same. It, I, I I talked to Kaine, right, and she said, I "Man, that." I feel like it has the same impact. I really do. Well, you you were a lot younger back then, right? Well, yeah, obviously we were all the same amount younger. I got to yeah. see it like freshly, probably like a year after its release, so not like really that fresh. Okay. But yeah, since then I've just been like insanely in love with this universe. No, uh, this this universe right here is it's it's just amazing such as the characters the characters themselves are are all of them are part of the story there's no character left out there's no character that ah oh, that character is just bland Ev and there's no development everyone everyone, everyone is, has the development matters. there is no static character yeah and everyone is does matter so it's it's basically that um um, there's a, I really wanted to, um, uh, say that all these characters, they made me feel things that I never felt before. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, you know, this is a spoiler review, of course, right? Right? Yeah, this, this is, this is a spoiler review? Yes, uh, <laughs> so, um, there's this character who wanted to be a girl. Okay, there's a spoiler. It, it, this is like spoiler. Like we, I can spoil the shit. Oh, is it? Yeah, of course. This is, this yeah. Okay. Let, yeah. Okay. Let's go through this. Okay. So there's this character called Luca. Yeah. Okay, and she becomes. I think it's zero zero six. Future gadget yeah, number zero zero six. Mm -hmm. uh, she basically she has a crush on the main character. Okay. Uh, Okabe. Uh, it, well, technically, he's a dude. Luca is a dude. Um, but, but he but looks he's, like a girl. He's very feminine. He's very effeminate. And being a dude, he has a crush on Okabe. So at one point in the story, he sends a D-mail, which we'll try and explain what that is a little later for something that I kind of want to do to see if we can decipher this whole thing. Right. Uh, but basically, he wants to send a D-mail to his mom while she's pregnant to eat more vegetables, and that will improve the, the chance of him being born a girl instead of a boy mm -hmm. <laughs> and he actually fucking does it he yeah, actually he accomplishes that mm -hmm. <laughs> and that changed the timeline totally and it's probably one of my favorite uh, awkward funniest scenes like sometimes you get that scene of like funny that's just awkward and very very cringy yeah just like one of those scenes that just like make you cringe so fucking hard and like one of those like really bad cringes where it's like this character just fucked the hell up yeah and um. i love those scenes i love those scenes of like this super awkward funny and that caused that 
but yeah. Yes. Um, about that character, Luca. Um, see here, whatever he is. <laughs> Wait, it's a he. Whatever. It's a he. Um, it's it's yeah. original original timeline. What's it's apparently in in parent? I'm doing air quotes right now. The correct timeline, the one they actually call, which is after the show, is Steins Gate. Mm -hmm. He's a boy. Yeah. Um, so Okabe, the protagonist, always reminded himself that okay, but he's a dude. You will mm -hmm. always like read the sub subtitles. I don't know in English. He always like states that, but he's a dude. <laughs> They'll, like start complimenting about how he's lived a hard life. He's always been very close to Okabe and yeah. everything, and how the way he trains day after day after day. But he's a dude. Yeah, but he's a dude. <laughs> um, there is um a thing be uh, Luca, you know, changing this uh gen um his sex mm -hmm. actually uh managed to make a, a huge complex in the whole you know uh timeline. But but here okay okay but here's the thing things are complex since the first five ten minutes right <laughs> and it doesn't tell you that <laughs> yeah until um, the last four three episodes episodes yeah <laughs> okay so okay okay so here's what we're gonna try and do uh what's the what's the thing that What's the thing where they say that like all the all the all the timelines meet? Uh, convergence think, convergence point. Yeah, the convergence point. I think there was episode. Yeah, like a marked mm. mar marked event in time that has to happen. Yeah. Uh. uh what was that the the time that uh her name again yeah to a single converging point so it's an attractor field yeah attractor field yeah yeah okay so let's try and talk about this in segments okay all right <coughs> oh god <laughs> so we have the start of the show that's our first convergence point. we're leading out of that to the first moment so basically we're separating in arcs let's say so let's separate it from the start of the show to the first email. Right. Do you remember where that was? What that was? The first email? Yeah. Well, I think he was uh, walking outside with. No, uh, no, 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 not, not, not that, not the, not, not that one. The first intentional email. Um, was it with the microwave? Yeah. Okay. Um, was with it with the, the banana? With the, the lottery numbers? Ah, oh, the lottery numbers. Yes, yes. Now no, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, that, that he accidentally inputted the number into the text incorrectly. And yeah, he did. that's why they didn't win the lottery. Because he just had fat fingers for texting. Yeah. Okay. So let's go between them and there first. How does that sound? Uh, ironic? Irony? What, what do you mean? Say? Um, was it supposed to happen? Any of that? Well, uh, I mean, the entire show wasn't supposed to <laughs> fucking happen when you when you try and think of it like that. Yeah. But I'm thinking like, what did you what did you get to see throughout? this first part like obviously it it cements a lot of like basically this first arc like a lot of people really don't pay attention to it because mm -hmm. nothing happens happens yeah when you think about it like nothing yet is happening it's literally like seven or eight episodes of where you just feel like it's you're like watching this anime yeah you're literally watching like basically seinfeld the anime for the first seven or eight episodes you're just being introduced to characters and they're just doing stupid shit just because they want to do stupid shit. That's it. 
yeah it's uh, experimental th stuff you know it's a lab they're experimenting um and yeah that i think um i think the oldest one is akabe right or a uh, daru uh, i think it might be daru i'm not too sure uh, yeah. they're either the same age or daru's older it's yeah. one of those yeah because uh are I don't think, you know, the protagonist is actually a high schooler. Or is he? The protagonist, I'll tell you right now. Uh, Okabe in Steins Gate. He was born, it says here he's born in 91. No, wow. Well, he was born in 91. He's, he's, right now he's supposed to be 27. <laughs> Today. <laughs> so let's say okay by the time of steins gate the original series he was 18 years old so he was in her in his senior year <laughs> basically yeah basically okay um well we never s uh, saw him you know well we did right i think it was in the first episode the main character taking, taking a class something like that he yeah, was like he was, arguing was with the professor okay, so what was happening was uh that dude was doing like an open conference like a discussion forum thing yeah yeah uh that and everyone then... could go to and he was starting to talk about like this entire like timelines and everything basically what the show is trying to talk about yeah exactly yeah and then but then yeah go ahead the the red hair comes in right oh could he yeah, uh, Christina. Christina. <laughs> Christina. My name is not Christina. <laughs> watch the watch the dub just for the lulz. Oh my god. My so... name is not Christina. Do do do. Do do do. Oh my god. So going back, get me out here. Um. <laughs> so yeah. Um. That first demon. Let's just go back to the the first demon. Okay. Um, okay. So hold up. Before we talk about the demon, what I'm trying to say is those first seven or eight episodes before the first intentional demon, like everything you see in those six or seven episodes, once you realize what's happened and what they're trying to do, basically for the rest of the show, those first couple of episodes, that's all you're seeing over and over again for the rest of the show yeah um well he tries to save her right Mhm. Mm okay so <laughs> that's gonna be this that's gonna be the second convergence point so right now let's talk about all the d-mails and how it's affecting stuff exactly okay, okay. so the first d-mail right was the lottery, the lottery number yeah. that went wrong so obviously luca arrives they send a text to Luca, telling him to win a couple of lottery numbers, yeah. and they do that with the whole, like, they got the IBM computer or whatever, they got the open microwave and shit, they send the email right. number, and Luca buys the ticket, but they sent the number wrong, so they didn't win the lottery, but they check it, and this text was sent days ago. And yeah, so basically what's going on is you send the text, you send the text, but you don't experience it yourself. You just send the text and it just moves on to the next timeline. But at that time that you sent the text, instead of at the time that you sent it to the past. Yes. Um, because he, he can, uh only remember it if he was back in that timeline exactly and he is the only one that remembers whenever a d-mail is progressively sent yeah he's the only one that remembers and the reason why is because he's dubbed himself with this ability called reading steiner yeah because he keeps talking about <clears throat> he keeps talking about stein's gate throughout this entire show but no one actually knows what Steins Gate is or what it actually represents until the last exactly. yeah, two the last episodes. Day. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh god. Um 
so yeah uh, that's basically what um um okawa can you know uh he he can remember that past timeline but if he actually went into the that current timeline where he actually sent the email he cannot remember what app happened previously in that one right he can he can remember all of it but in in, in the timeline that he is right now but no matter sends... what timeline he moves to if he moves back to the same timeline he's still going to remember everything that happened that's the point exactly. of the enti- that's the point of the entire development of his character throughout yeah. the show I, is I him guess. trying to <laughs> fix things but at the same time he's carrying all the weight of everything that all the timelines that are going yeah, on that's, which that's a really good protagonist right there yeah which let's go ahead and move on uh a bunch of emails are sent and shit gets crazy people change sex yeah. items are misplaced <laughs> uh people disappear people come back entire cultures are erased yeah from the town even stores Hashtag bring back Moe. Uh. <laughs> yeah. And then everything leads up to this. It's explained better by a character which reveals themselves to be someone else, which completely blows your mind. Uh, but uh, basically, they explain about this whole thing called the tractor fields, which are all these timelines in one direction or there are different timelines where things are different but then they have this convergence point right so all the timelines that they're going that he's experiencing with the d-mails lead to one convergence point i like to call it the convergence point of the i like i like to call it the convergence point of the the fragmented universe i like to call it the fragmented universe because it doesn't give to a whole because they have this little device called the the reading world line reader i think it's called Mm -hmm. yeah and the universe that they're in throughout the entire show or most of the show is the one where the before the dot what would be the whole number is zero so never in that moment does that world does those world lines add up to a whole so that's why i prefer to call it the fragmented universe because i feel like that entire show is because they got sent to that universe which wasn't supposed to be which so that is... that so that universe is let's basically uh that universe right there he actually made it happen he made it happen he caused okay. that universe to to things to change to progress into what that universe is and its history so in a way you could say he caused it to happen Mm -hmm. but because he caused it to happen it happened so it exists so technically you can also say he didn't cause it to happen because it already had to exist for him to have traveled there Mm -hmm. but in a way you know it's 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 things that you gotta like contend with that you know there's that thing but both are still gonna give the same result so let's just keep going with it you know right uh, so basically this convergence point this fragmented universe uh, what happens is Mayuri which is I guess this I like to call her the second protagonist you know like I feel like she's going to be made more important if the story ever shows us more I mean it is there's a new game coming out which means there pro- yeah. there's probably going to be a new anime too uh, but okay so basically this character Mayuri Dun, dun, dun. Cues yeah, dun, dun, dun. my waifu for this show uh, she's really kawaii <laughs> <laughs> she is killed we don't know why we don't know for what reason fate, <laughs> fate. and it, be, it happens the night that uh, all the characters discover a way to actually Loop. travel through time so they yeah. loop to a certain point there is a certain moment where they can loop i think it's two or three days into the past two or three Something days like or maybe wasn't like 
four hours. Was it four hours? I think it was four hours at first. At first? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So they d they discover this thing that's like a pair of headphones and shit. Yeah. So you, it keeps looping you back. And it literally becomes like episodes of these couple of hours running over again and again. It's torturing. Again, it's again, very, very torturing. Of this character. It's torture for this character, for Okabe. And even the audience. <laughs> because every single time, it's literally episodes of him trying to save this girl that he can't live without. Because he needs to have her alive. And she just gets killed over and over again. And, and how the world, how the universe isn't letting that happen. Isn't letting him save her. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I mean, that actually happens in... Let's just take it in real life. I mean... Sometimes even the world, it's uh, destiny by fate or vice versa. I think it's the same thing. But it's like those current events that happen. And like, well, that's supposed to happen. But at least uh, Okabe, the protagonist, you know, tried to loop. But he, he tried so many ways to save her. That That's the thing. Because he, he, he to tried see, to... You need to see it. You need to see it. There's yeah. way too many ways that it happens. It's a yeah. good... It's a good full, like, two or three episodes of him just trying to save this character. Totally. And it's torturing. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. Poor girl, man. It's just... I was like... Because this this character right here... Uh, she's, so, she's very important in the series. And she is very important overall. I mean, and I start loving this character ever since uh, episode one. Um, she is very important. She has this um, background story that is really sad, and that's where you like actually like her more, because her background and you know the, the backstory is actually uh, what I think her background story is what actually you know Okabe uh, managed to at least change stuff. When he, I think he, it was in that, I think it was that last episode when she did not die. I think she was on, on the cemetery. Yeah. And no, I, I don't think it was that one. I think, I think she she's still there. I think it was in the cemetery where she said she could remember or she had dreams about something happening. That, that's another thing that we need to talk about. <laughs> How she, okay, so there was this moment before she ev evidently got saved. Spoilers. There ain't no spoilers yeah, here. Whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there was this moment where she started talking about how she started having dreams and memories about all the different ways she had died. Mm hmm. And that, and that only this, not this happened. Sets with... up, this sets up the seeds, let's mm -hmm. say. I kind of want to say this like sets up the seeds of uh, something that they talked about in the last episode or the second to last episode. It was just brought up as an afterthought and then dismissed by Okabe. But yeah. about other characters developing the ability to keep their memories throughout timelines. Yeah, Luca was one of uh, one, one of them when he she whatever he is uh she was on a date with okabe yeah they mm -hmm. went on a date when so she so was a girl to, so okabe to to decide that he needed to decide how he was gonna save mayuri he goes right. on this he goes on this adventure to undo everyone's d-mails and go in reverse through all the different timelines that he's yes. that he's gone through uh, and for Lucas, they have to go on this date. Yes. Lucas, like, go on a date with me because I really, really want you to just be my boyfriend for a day. And yeah, I'll he... tell you what I did to undo the D-mail. 
Yeah, and it was pretty sad though. I mean, and I totally fell for him though at uh, that moment. I mean, and he actually, she when she, he was a she, she actually remembers when she was a boy things that she that it happened in the other dimension, in the other timeline, and that there's exactly. where exactly oh, talked to her to get her to remember it. Yeah, she remembered. And uh, th- those are one of the things that... Which is why I enjoyed so much in the... Sorry that I interrupted. Which yeah. is why I enjoy so much in the first episodes where he would, like, say a bunch of stuff about him and say, but he's a boy. Exactly. And then, like I said, ev- even the slightest thing in those first seven or eight episodes could be referenced to something that most people that I explained this to, they're like, holy crap, you're right. But they didn't notice that that same line was delivered in that scene just with a different tone. Oh. But it was the exact same line where she she says that she remembers all of that. But then Okabe interjects with, but you were a boy. Boy, exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um... Uh, what other characters? Uh, uh, the one with the glasses. What was her name? Uh, Mocha, Mo- Moeka. Yeah, the the one that she always she didn't talk and uh, she just said she always email. texted. Yeah, <laughs> man, I. <laughs> I mean, she was the hottest one of them all, but. <laughs> Moeka, Moeka Kiryu. Yeah. The girl with the glasses, man, her. Mm-hmm. See, wow, um. Secret, agent wife. Secret, agent wife. She's Where's rather more joke? confusing than the than the whole series. <laughs> Dude, okay, so so the 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 reason I was talking about how everyone matters, right, is the twist that we get from her entire thing to undo the D mail. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean. Yes, yes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> who, who the person she was always texting was. That caught me by full on surprise. That was crazy as fuck. Yeah, and like, it was right, literally right there. Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, what? Nani? Nani? Yeah, and that was. That, that was the most awesome plot to Sprite. They're like, you would not expect that, really. You just. <laughs> I know, dude. I know. It's as much crazy. as you had this sharring gun, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, it doesn't work. Your shouting gun, shouting gun has nothing on Steins Gate. Nah. <laughs> it's none of it. There's this other character that is very, very important through you know the timelines and uh, time traveling and uh she codenamed herself um what was uh the 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 time machine girl was her name amane amane i think that was her yeah she she also had brown hair yeah suzuha amane yeah um her code name was I think she uh She, she was the warrior, me. wasn't she? She was gonna yeah, be she was the warrior. warrior. And she was in the first six episodes, you know, telling Okabe to contact or send emails to some to somebody that knows about time traveling. John T John Titor. John Titor. Yeah, John Titor. John Titor. John Titor. <laughs> And oh my gosh, um, that reveal oh, right dude. there. <laughs> I know. So this chick gets revealed to be John Titor. Yes. Um, you don't actually know that until episode right at the last uh, few episodes. Really. No, I would say. I would say. Episode 12, 13. 12 or thirteen, something like that. All right, right, yeah, I think yeah, so. You get, you get. That's like a good midway point. Yeah, yeah, midway point, yeah. And then she, oh my gosh, that that was pretty sad right there. Um, uh, 
But yeah, um, they they both interact. Um, Okabe and John Taitor uh, keep on, you know, emailing themselves. Uh, Okabe being confused of his Stein's powers and all that, asking uh, John Taitor, uh, you know, several stuff about the uh, time traveling. But then t- uh, John Taitor, you know, uh, he actually or she. <laughs> Um, tells him that he is the savior of the of the world or something uh, because he actually can remember uh, what happened in the previous uh, point time in you know what we talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. So um, so this character right here, it's uh, uh, John Titor. Um, she get her uh, time machine fixed, and so I basically, really so basically, the, this John Titor character is from the future. It's from the future. She's from twenty thirty seven, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Let's say and she's yeah. Let's say she's from twenty thirty seven. Yeah. So basically, right now, what we've experienced in the show to this point is two different universes from what we've talked about, mm-hmm. and that's what we see throughout this show. So the first universe, the fragmented one, the one that always starts with zero, has two big differences from the first one. So the things they have in different is that in the first universe that we see, or that we're introduced to, Mayuri dies. Like the big the big convergence points in all this, in all those universes that we see in the show are that Mayuri dies and that Amane who uses the name John Titor. Yeah. Crashed the ship into the building instead of successfully landing it. Yeah. But she said it didn't actually crash. It just, just landed there, right? I mean, it technically crashed because we see it in the first... And we see it when we see the other universe that it's exactly. just landed there perfectly. Yeah. Wow. Um, analyzing here, just loading. You, you guys, if you actually, you know, this is obviously spoilers, but uh, if you, you know, intend to watch this, it's, you're going to have loading screen on your mind trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Yeah. Um, so this character, uh, John Taitor, she, she goes back to 20, 2010, where Okabe and all these people are to actually find his, her father. This is another reveal plot twist, <laughs> which is what's, which is what's revealed with our favorite, uh, kawaii character. That, that review was amazing. I, I tell you that. Because she, she figured it out like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. And like, that, that was Wait, so that means that this. It was perfect. Yeah, it was so perfect, man. It's like, oh, man, we're, we're so used to uh, cliche stuff. But uh, this thing is just, wow. I mean, just the simple thing that happened. He, Daru fixing the machine and then out of nowhere like she she's been you know puzzling you know uh getting all these puzzles getting together you know they they both have a connection the time machine says this uh and then the name Daru of and and her and her name you know uh John Titor which was I keep on forgetting her name, her real name. Amane. Suzuna Amane. Suzuna Amane. Amane. And yeah, uh, I really do not know what to say. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> so basically, basically, uh, Itaru, who's this dude named Daru, who's always been like this perverted person in the yeah. entire show. You see him doing perverted things sometimes someone a girl character will say something and he'll be like i'm sorry could you repeat that just 
just so else. <laughs> Did you say that again one more time? He's a hentai. And he's going and he's going to all these like mo bars with girls in like flimsy dresses or whatever. And yeah. cats and shit. So <laughs> Yeah, but then he reveals or like is revealed that the John Titer character or Suzuha Mane is actually the daughter of uh uh daru itaru hashida yep so like yeah <laughs> there's there's your there's your pappy yeah so pappy uh, is a hentai and yeah, has already I, I was, tried to hit yeah. you hit on <laughs> yeah, you yeah exactly like 10 that was the already. weirdest thing i'm like um is he trying to hit her or uh because i was like speculating stuff because w once she mentioned like i'm trying to you know look for my father in this timeline and i'm like well it, it has gotta be either uh, akabe or or daru or someone else right or but then <laughs> he got that reveal like oh gosh didn't expect that either but yeah, yeah it's, it's like one of those like sting reveals just like Ugh. yeah uh damn <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um what other character? The maid one, the the one that works in a shop. <laughs> oh, fa fa uh, Fenrir, Fen Ferris, Ferris, Ferris. It's not a shop. It's a restaurant. Co uh, it's a moe restaurant. Okay, yeah. So basically, she's like the daughter of this of this really rich dude, and he offers her like to open a business, and she decides to open this moe business. Mm -hmm. Her point to this story is that she sends a D-mail and it has to be undone. But basically what her D-mail was, was to never have set up a Moe shop. Mm -hmm. And that changed the entirety of their town that we got to see. Yeah. And that was crazy. Yeah, that was... Yeah, that... Damn. Uh... I yeah, know. it was it was really crazy. Hard to digest at the same time because you you were at least used to it what was going on outside, but mm -hmm. then everything just changes and like okay, all right, let's just get used to this one. But then everything ever since that one, I mean, it got even worse. <laughs> the situation got even worse because. They needed to get some type of computer, right? Uh, and IBM 50. IBM. Oh my gosh, they get revolu. <laughs> they needed to get this other computer uh, to get. Uh, what was it again? Was it for? It wasn't for time traveling, right, or something like that. Yeah, it was uh, for the emails. Yeah, the emails, and uh, they couldn't find it anywhere after that happened. Yeah. And uh No, they couldn't I, find it after Mocha's D mail. Moeka. Mo the glasses chick. Was it was it hers? The texting one, yeah. Because she texted oh, right. herself she texted herself the location. Yes. The location, of yes. Yes, exactly. She wants to, the one that ha that stole it, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> trying to still digest this anime. Uh, so yeah, that's what exactly happened. And uh, yeah, it, it, it just got messed up. Um, what other characters are we missing here? Oh, I know one that we're missing. But it's going to move this entire conversation forward once we mention her. Okay. Oh, the red hair, right? Yeah. yeah. You want to go there? Yeah. Okay. So, this entire show has been, up to this point, Okabe trying to save Mayuri from dying. Mm -hmm. Literally, the last three episodes, the third to last episode, is them just being happy about this whole thing, that he finally fixed everything, Mayuri's alive... But he then realizes 
that going to this next timeline he's basically he at this time he's already realized that sending the first email in the first episode is by accident is what caused him to skip to this timeline that he's in right now where Mighty will die but then he realizes that moving to that original timeline is what uh, where the show actually started, at least within the first five ten minutes. Yeah. Is what causes uh, is where uh, Kurisu or Chris or Christina, however you want to call her. Uh, we see her in the first in the first episode. We see her dead. And it's in that timeline. And he texts Daru about that. And that's what causes the first email. Because the text was sent at the same time as Amane's time machine landed in that building that where building, Chris yeah. was killed. And that caused the first email to happen. And sure. that's why the email works with the original machine because they already tested with a banana that they were able to send it back to the rack where it was torn from connect back to the other bananas mm -hmm. so that's time traveling happening right there so the reason that machine works is because it's the same thing it's the same thought of it like the d-mail was a mail that was sent at the exact same time as the time machine doing its thing so, so this little thing in this apartment is causing the exact same pull and a text message is, is being sent at the same time. So that's the way that this whole thing works. At least for the D-mail. Yeah. So, what happens is... We, we're gonna have to put, like, a bunch of little pins in this whole thing. Yeah. Okay, so, first pin. First universe. Uh, or the universe we see the most. Mayuri dies. Time machine is crashed into the building. Right. In the original universe, Chris dies, Christina dies, mm -hmm. and the time machine is landed correctly on the roof. We see it in the first episode, and we see it at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, Okabe basically has to make this choice of who does he want in his life. Mayuri... Or Christina. The dude decides to save Mayuri. Mayuri, yeah. And he goes to this original timeline. Now I want to see. What did you understand after he decided to change the timeline? What did you think? What was going on? Um change the timeline before she dies or right you at change it. the timeline to right before she died or no or no he changed the timeline to after a couple of weeks after right like everything that had happened that time period still happened in that original timeline time and when yeah. he switched to it he did it in that way switching to that timeline and then uh, Amane from that timeline comes back in time, time yeah. finds him, and tells him, hey, we gotta save Christina. That it was his future self telling that in 15 years from back then. Mm -hmm. So let's say, okay, so the reason why, because uh... Christina in that timeline in the future Christina's theory so we get to see throughout the multiple episodes that Christina's theory is what uh, is the reason why she was killed her father killed her yeah and he took her theory papers and he fled to Germany and Germany used those papers or wherever it was uh, to use those World papers, caused World War Three, because the papers were about like time travel and all that, and they used those papers and those theories to like create a bunch of gadgets and high tech stuff and yeah. start World War Three. 
that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, let's put a pin on that. Okay. There's one important pin right there. So, second to last episode, uh, Okabe gets on the time machine with Amane, and they go back. They try to save Christina. Mm-hmm. Fail. Yes. Complete fail. That wasn't. Yeah, that was utter. That Okabe was utter. kills Christina by accident. Yeah. Because destiny has to happen because convergence points. But uh. Even yeah. the scream, the scream, his scream. Yeah. Needed Everything. to happen. So uh. So. He goes back. He's utterly defeated, and then he hears the message from his future self. Mm-hmm. But before he hears the message from his future self that moment he arrives he's defeated he gets off the time machine and he starts moving towards the door to go back home and suffer right yeah put a pin on that okay there's another important pin okay yeah and then he hears the message finishes hearing the message last episode okay right last episode starts what happens throughout the last episode Well, it, it's basically um, he he goes back uh, to try save uh, Christine, and wow, this this is a major reveal. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Um, so he he actually managed to to go back with a new plan. This new plan is is gonna work. Yes or yes. It's a uh, wow. It's <laughs> it's even complicated even saying it. So he actually goes back. He's in the room, and um, what's her name again? Damn it. Uh, Mayuri, Christina. Uh, Christina. That's ca- yeah. Christina and her father start arguing. You know, uh, like always, and uh, um. Let me try to remember what happened. Okay, so they uh, get into this dispute. So basically, yeah. basically what he has to try and do is, is to not let the dad successfully get out of the country with the documents. He has to make it look like Christina's been killed. Been killed, exactly. But basically, basically the him... Because he time traveled to the past to save her, the him in the the past him that's currently in that timeline in that world is still there in that building. So he has to he has to make his past self see exactly what he, what saw, he saw when he went through that moment. Exactly. But he has to do it without Christina actually dying, without altering the future. Exactly. So what this dude does is he causes this random ass events for this guy to to get caught by the government by putting a toy in the papers or whatever. So everything gets brought back to that their government. Uh he causes Christina to pass out. How does he how does he make her pass out? Did he just Uh, a taser? A taser. A taser. So he uses a taser to knock her out, and then he brings this thing that's supposed to be full of like red ooze, but it's solidified. So he's like, "How am I gonna get fake blood to make this work?" Yeah, it dried out. <laughs> the dude realizes what he's gonna have to do. So this is where the ending gets a little freaky. Some people freak out because of this, thinking about it. So. Yeah, it's- it's like, oh my gosh! Please don't die. <laughs> do you want? Do you want to try? Do you want to try and show like what's up? Do you want to try and say like what's up? Like why? What's going on? Well, he, he... Mm-hmm. did he actually stab himself? Yeah. <laughs> he, well, he... Okay. <laughs> this, is, this is what you got. This is what you got to think about. He stabs himself. Bleeds himself to death, near death. Yeah. Basically. 
so that there's enough blood on the floor and around Christina. And then he disappears into the spaceship. The real him, or the, the one in that world, in the past him, sees Christina passed out with the blood, and he freaks out. Yeah. He saw that in the first and episode. then the entire timeline just continues as it as it does. With no alteration. With no alteration. Wow. So the <laughs> thing you gotta think about, so the rest of this episode, the ending, after he gets on the time machine, so he gets on the time machine, he dies. In the time machine. That Okabe that we followed throughout yeah. the entire show. Yeah, he passed. <laughs> he passed away. Yeah. And the one we see at the ending reuniting with everyone making everything li like just fit is the one that they were setting up to see christina's fake death indeed mm -hmm. so he that's, didn't that's know that is. christina survived he didn't know who christina was until like weeks later weeks later yeah. or months later where they just like met randomly on the streets like hey who are you hey what's up you know yeah she, she was but trying to look for, she, she was trying to look for him like to yeah. thank him uh and yeah it, it was like out out in you know it's, it was outside <laughs> where they actually mm. met for the first time yeah <laughs> oh god <laughs> okay so <laughs> let's go back to that Okay, so that's all of that is the ending for Steins Gate. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so let's go back to that pin that we put. Do you remember where it was? Um. Well, we have pins of um, uh, the crashed um, time traveling machine. Okay, so that was. That was I put a pin on that just for the, just for the. This is what differentiates this universe from this universe. Okay, there was another pin of him being all you know down and depressed because he's to he totally failed badly when he actually came back from the from that past, mm -hmm. and he was okay. going to. Yeah. Okay. All right. This one's really important. Okay. Right. Okay, so this is how Steins Gate Zero works. Remember how I told you what describes what I call the fragmented universe? Which is the universe that starts with the zero and then the right. dot and the world, what d the numbers that identify the world line. Right. So, the universe he comes back to, <clears throat> let's say that, uh, he killed Christina and comes back and is so super super down and yeah. Amane wants to show him the message from his future self right now imagine if he just says nah fuck that I give up she's dead and he just continued on that timeline instead of actually ending the show so Holy shit. that timeline that he continues is Steins Gate Zero. The sequel. The sequel, if you want to call it that. It is mm -hmm. it is set a few years after. But it's not a sequel off the ending. It's the ending, a sequel yeah. of what if this instead. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now, now, now that I think of it, um, yeah, him saying no, is that the same Akabe from that future? So, South, okay, in 15 so, years that, so in the Okabe that we see in Steins Gate Zero, basically, right. is the Okabe that killed himself in the actual ending of the first show. When he stabbed himself. 
he didn't stab himself. What if he never stabbed himself? That's the thing. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, um... He killed Christina. He got off the thing. And he's done. He's gone. That's it. Boom. Stein's get zero. Off from there. Uh... Yeah, um, uh, okay, um, just, just let me get this clean. Do you need, do you need, okay, take a moment, breathe, <laughs> breathe. Okay, this, this, this Okabe, okay. Okay, the, it's zero, it's zero, it's, it's a timeline. Mm -hmm. Is it the same Okabe from that future? From that future? Yeah, the one that sent that message it to could back. Be. It has to be, man. It, it has to because, be, yeah. Because, because, you know, you know, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> don't forget, Okabe has reading Steiner. So what if it's not that same Okabe from the future, but one that went through that timeline and is sending him that message to that specific timeline? Timeline. Because he did send a man, Amane, through a time machine. So does the time machine only travel in the same timeline, or can it travel to the past across different timelines? Well, maybe there was a demo he sent to him. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> now you see why I am so into this show. Um, yeah, uh... I wonder if the video games are, are a little bit different, because I want to play them. <laughs> I really want to play through all the fucking video games and stream them. Oh my gosh. God. Dude, I have never seen a time traveling anything. Anime. Time traveling anything like this. Nothing like this, dude. It's just. It has all the base, you know, it has the time machine, it has the loop, it has the text message to, uh, to go to the past and altering the past. The only thing that's left is doors from the uh, you know future and and the past. That that's the only thing that the Steins Gate you know uh, doesn't have. What are you trying to be, the keymaker from the Matrix? What <laughs> what do you mean? The doors, dude. I know there's doors. <laughs> one specific key for one specific door. Oh my gosh. Okay, so overall. We, overall. Uh, yeah, overall, this anime right here is one of the best, but the most, you know, it's, I can say this even a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 easily, just because of the good writing, character development, everyone has character development, the art style is, is gorgeous. The lighting, the colors, everything in this anime, it just tells you visually and in writing what exactly is. From an art perspective, it's just amazing. And I, I, I get other people that say that oh, it's too boring, but to give it a chance, read the subtitles or watch a dub so you can understand it. Even me, like, I'm still a bit confused and I'm still, you know, digesting and, you know, recap all the things that happen, you know, it's still rewatchable. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> rewatchable. Totally rewatchable. Re so, um... Is there anything else we want to add to this review, this spoiler? Uh, review. Uh, I really want Vid, to get to Steins Gate Zero. <laughs> it says, okay, so I haven't watched Steins Gate Zero. Me neither, so but. We're gonna, we're gonna both take our time, Yeah. watch through Steins Gate Zero, and we're gonna do another review for it. Mm -hmm. But. Final, let's just do like a final verdict thing. So I'm just gonna say, this show is like, if you're not watching the show to watch a smart show, if you just want a dumb show to watch, don't watch it. You're not going to like this show. Yeah. <laughs> but exactly what this show... 
exactly what this show aims for, tries to do, tries to accomplish, and mm-hmm. tries to give you, and what it sets out to create and build in its universe, it does. This show is a fucking masterpiece. Masterpiece. I'm going to tell you. To me is a is literally one of those perfect animes for the perfect situation. Like if a really if, good adaptation. If you're in that mood, if if you're in that mood to watch an anime that when you're in a good mood to watch an anime is a 10 out of 10. That I mean, in that situation, to be like a really good show, that show is a ten out of ten. Is like the perfect anime. Indeed. And like this... you can, you cannot nitpick mm. that anime. Sorry. I'm Indeed. Much go ahead. Uh, it's all right. Um, just to wrap it up, this anime will treat everyone being smart. Oh, this this does not underestimate his audience. This is, you know, I'm not saying it's for smart people because me, I ain't that smartest people in the world. I mean, it's, you know, but it treats its audience like it, like it's supposed to be. They, they don't treat them like they're dumb, like, oh, that's pretty obvious or that or this is it. No, it's, it's basically what it is. It's, it's, it's a lot of things happening. We missed a lot of things. It's because it's a lot of details in this, you know, anime and just have the experience yourself because i have a different experience from digital right now because i there's a lot of characters that i really like a lot of them and there's a there's other characters that i was like man you 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 better change or or else this does not happen <laughs> and, you know the, you you get those kind of feelings and you you get it uh, you attach to these characters and that's the most important about an anime a tv show or whatever is the characters the story and what it is around them so i get this a 10 out of 10 easily <laughs> my top five favorite and uh, I definitely watch uh, Steins Gate Zero and play the video games. I don't care if it's their visual novel, so th- that- that's gonna be my first visual novels that I'll play because it's amazing. The video game, I don't wanna, I don't wanna spoil anything, but right. uh, in the video game, like it is so much more expanded. Those like infinite loops of Myri's Meyer- death that he's just like trying to prevent it he like goes so insane trying to figure all of it out Mm -hmm. like i think i haven't played the first game myself but i gotta play i gotta play it man i did hear (laughs) i did hear about someone on a forum talking about how it gets to the point of of the main character in in text quotations and like thoughts to himself not actually doing it considering sexually assaulting another character because he's already in this like this entire thing of trying to save this girl and everything just seeming hopeless while he's just in this infinite loop Mm -hmm. he's just that broken which is what the situation does to him yeah so it's just it's it's That's crazy amazing. dude any anyways we we need to wrap it up this was a yeah. really awesome good analytical anal, uh, anal, 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 analytical analytical review spoiler review so yeah guys i hope you like this review uh please don't forget to comment and subscribe please subscribe to disical games and also disical games on twitch right yep Nerd Kingdom, it's, it's Nerd Kingdom on YouTube, Digital Games on Twitch. On Twitch. All right, guys. Uh, this has been Zara Punky and Digital, and we'll see you guys later. Nerd out.